Hello and uh, welcome to the Sweeney Show Business and Life Podcast. Uh, joining me here today is possibly the busiest man in Dublin. Uh, Jamie White is an exciting uh, entrepreneur, businessman, social media guru. Um, the start to summit is coming soon. Jamie, is there anything you don't do? Uh, no, I'm having a load of fun at the moment. That's some intro. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, no, so like we've been following you for a long time on social media. Actually, uh, I think it was three years ago last March, because I remember Ireland played a rugby match uh, that weekend that Gary Vaynerchuk uh, visited Ireland the following Monday or Tuesday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, you were the man that brought Gary to Ireland. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was, that, that was really special, because for me, I... A big part of my work is actually just personal indulgence. Um, I'm a big fan of Gary, <laughs> loved him, and I, uh, I kind of constructed... So you just wanted to meet Gary, how am I going to make this work? And just put it, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, I did, wow. I did the same a couple of years previous with uh, remember that movie, The Wolf of Wall Street came out, yeah. and I was like, wow, I'd love to go for a night out with that guy. <laughs> and uh, six weeks later, we hosted him here in Ireland. Really? And brought him out, yeah. Wow. Um, actually, he didn't come out, okay. uh, which was a bit of a shame. Yeah. But it was a. But he's probably uh, quite down a bit, has he? Since his. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, had to. but it's, it, it's a lovely way to. Uh, it's a lovely way to work when you can yeah. really, really enjoy what you do. And yeah. It, yeah, Gary, that, uh, that Gary P event was deadly. Wow, well, yeah, it was, it was like packed. It was in the Mansion, was the mansion House. Was our, was yeah, it was in the Mansion House. Yeah. It was again, like I, I, I had been kind of onto his team over and over and over, seeing when can we do a date, when can we do a date, and I got a, a call then, uh, li literally at 20 odd days notice, um, saying, look, okay, this is gonna happen. if you want, we can do it now. Um, otherwise, it might be a year. Wow, is that, and is that a normal lead in time? Is that a short lead in time? How, no, for normal, an event? normal lead in for any kind of event like that would be about six months. Okay. Um, so, like, if you think about it, if you get an email and it's like, okay, would you like to pay this much? Um, Early bird kind of deal or whatever, yeah. And uh, host, uh, host this event in, let's say, 30 days. Uh, you know, as soon as you get that offer, you have to check with the venue, you have to yeah. check oh, yeah. the actual calendar to make sure, sure nothing competes. So, now doing a doing an event at that kind of short notice is really really pressured. Yeah. But again, if it's something you're dying to yeah. do and you're excited about, it's all. Yeah, I, I just remember the energy in the room. He just brought out a book before the last one, wasn't it? it was second yeah. last, but just it was just insane in there. It was brilliant. Yeah, I ended up. I part of the deal was I had to buy actually two thousand copies of that book. <laughs> I actually all got three books. Yeah. yeah. So I had uh, boxes and boxes and boxes. I actually I donated. 1,000 copies to okay. uh, Boston University because oh, wow. it actually it costs so much just to ship them over from yeah. the US. So. And is like is the Gary Vaynerchuk uh, behind the scenes? Is that a big machine that you, that's like running? Yeah. Or is, it, do you, uh, is there personal engagement there? If, 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 funny enough, so um, I, I go back and forth now. I go back. I, I just think they're such an interesting business, and I was asking them about their their lead gen for the agency. So obviously Gary Vaynerchuk is the man behind Vayner Media, yeah. a digital marketing agency. And uh, I was like, look, you know, you obviously do so much work with Gary. What do you do with the business? Just really from my own kind of personal perspective, because I'm leading social here. So yeah. I wanted to know how they're marketing so I could kind of. Uh, and is that more where you want to work on the business rather than in the business to see how it operates? Well, no, I, I just I, I was just really interested in what they're doing. Um, and interestingly, uh, they actually said they don't do any um, media, any PR for Vayner Media. They concentrate all their efforts in uh, into Gary, okay, okay. Um, because they said they've done tests and they get a tenfold return on their investment promoting Gary uh, versus promoting the agency. So believe it or not, Gary has a team of twenty-five people that work full time on him. Wow, just on the Gary Vaynerchuk brand. It, on the brand, so whether that's you know each of his social media presences, whether that's prepping all his content that he's publishing out. Yeah. Um, or whether that's literally doing reach out. And then there's like spin-offs out of that they do that one day course that you can do, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So they've turned his brand itself into its own business. Okay. But that business in turn generates a huge amount of business for his agency. It's a fantastic... Oh, yeah. um, but that's kind of his philosophy all the time, isn't it? It's like the long play, patience, you, you don't... Well, there's the long, long play, absolutely. But what his kind of, uh, his kind of thing with, with uh, marketing is that don't market almost as like this kind of this spend, this invisible spend, track everything back and ensure that you make a business out of your marketing. And that's really, really interesting. That's a huge opportunity that digital allows a lot of businesses to track their marketing efforts, 
see what works to their pages or connected yeah. to their uh, to their purchase buttons yeah. and, and actually have a marketing mechanic but have that marketing mechanic generate money in itself wow. and at the same time generate leads so is well. then we'll get onto your own company in social in a second but just is marketing then become more computer science rather than kind of yeah, old yeah, school I, marketing I, so it's really kind of how Everybody's on the phone, that's where the attention is. How do we get the attention onto someone's phone and then see exactly who's watching, when they're watching, how they're watching, where they're watching, take all that information, collate it back to my product, and then just double down on where it's actually working. You know it all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it all, but like, no, but isn't, isn't that like, a, it's more a computer science element the, rather than? Uh, for me, I, I, uh, I get asked this kind of a bit, and the fact is for me, if, if marketing, it, uh, was say if marketing is or if marketing was as it was 10 15 years ago i wouldn't have an agency yeah um but what social media <coughs> allows essentially is you've heard that saying marketing is bullshit well it pulls all that marketing out and yeah it makes it almost an exact science um and the work we do as an agency for clients is so sophisticated it's uh, but it's also there's so much opportunity yeah um and as I said, you literally, with our clients, were able to say, look, you, you gave us X yeah. and we gave you back Y. It's so targeting because I remember I read a book marketing years ago. And one of the phrases that came out was like, half the money I spend on marketing is wasted, but I don't know which half. So people are just throwing money at it because they don't, and then they know some of it works, but they can't track it and they can't see what's actually working. For us, that's, the, that's actually the really exciting thing. Like we can see exactly where the wastage is and you can cut that out and you can double down then on yeah. where, wherever it is that's generating your own Yeah, ROI. and so, uh, so Leading Social, so the, the, what, is, what is Leading Social? Uh, it, it's essentially a social media marketing agency. Okay. But, um, and do you just concentrate on social media? Do you have the traditional yeah, do no, newspaper, do. print, radio? Uh, all we do is social media marketing. For me, uh, there's a lot of agencies that do a lot, um, but the opportunity in social media is so vast, but also the expertise is so demanding that I would look at a lot of agencies that are doing a lot uh, and say that whenever one is doing a lot, they're, they're spread too, too tightly and it becomes very hard to master that. So, our brief is solely and totally social media marketing and the idea of that is to give us the opportunity to build out that expertise over and above uh, competitors in the market and so it's a social media marketing agency but i like to think we do it uh, exceptionally different uh, to others um, and we really try to push it to an absolute cutting edge okay and then just say do you work with people who already have an existing social media profile or do you start up some from yeah. zero and ground do, up and build it from we, there? We had a client that had 200,000 followers that actually uh, we, we scrapped all that and started from, started from fresh. But no, we can take the So I, I actually ask all my marketing uh, podcast guests, are you bloggers unveiled? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just very <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, it's funny that whole that whole space. I uh, like a really, really controversial space. Some good, but so much negative is coming. Yeah, from. yeah. I don't want to be connected with that. Yeah, no. Um, no yeah. I'm. Uh, there's a part of me that likes to kind of indulge in the real positive, yeah. positive space. But there's a fine line sometimes, isn't there? There is. There's a, and in all that, and actually sitting down with the legal counsel here. Um, yeah, no, there, there, yeah. there, there definitely is a, a fine line. It, to be completely honest, like I, I don't fo follow any of those pages. I don't indulge in any of that content. Uh, I, I, I'm a big believer that whenever you do indulge in that negative kind of space, and this is a bit tough for yourself because a, a lot of, obviously, people have ne negative issues. They seek legal counsel. But for me, I try, to, uh, I try to distance myself as much as possible. I just think it's quite consuming and quite contagious. Um, but you, that's, you're quite positive in, in your outlook and your, on your Instagram everywhere, yeah, but it seems yeah, to... I come through all your, even your business practice? I, I, I think though, people think like, so I, I would try to be a positive because I think it's, it creates uh, positive results in anything that you do. Um, but I think a lot of people will go, oh, well, you know, how do you, how would you maintain a positive outlook? And that's, well, I, 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 I kind of try to distance myself, distance myself from negativity, negativity and try and reinforce or concentrate as much positivity. Sounds, as I said, a little, little bit hippie-ish now. Yeah. Um, but it's funny how a lot of people will indulge in negative, say for example, say like those pages and really, really, you know, think, enjoy them and everything like that. But there's a part of them that enjoys it. And then there's another part of them that rots as a result, I think. Now that might be a little bit extreme, but anybody would know that if you spend, even if, even on your phone as a whole, if you spend five, six, seven hours looking at your phone, you will walk away from that feeling miserable, 
drained, exhausted. So I suppose that's maybe the smallest yep. little ounce on that. Um, I'll get into a big wormhole on that one, so I better pull myself <laughs> no, right okay. out. So just on the positivity, and like I know that you've kind of moved into wellness and all that, um, I suppose, that area. Is that... Uh, are they connected? Is that something that you've seen that it's kind of a follow-on that not only will I be positive in my business, my personal life, I want to have some kind of balance? Well, the first thing for me is understanding how I kind of ended up from there off the back of a, off the back of a social media agency. And what happened in the agency um, was brilliant in that I founded it, set it up, I have a really, really good team up there. Um, but as it's evolved and evolved, and I got this really good advice previously, it was um, as you're expanding, uh, hire based on your weaknesses and take a step back and uh, very soon all my weaknesses were turned into strengths in the agency uh, and then very soon my uh, my overall strength uh, was diluted down by individual strength within given areas there's a fantastic expertise up there and uh, actually it in takes a certain person to actually go and seek that advice listen to it and take it on board but then actually put it in place but, do you know what what's nice is i have a vested interest so it's a really interesting thing when you come to a time and you realize, okay, actually somebody will be better positioned to run this agency than me. It might be a little bit tough stepping back, but I'll do all the better from it. Yeah. Um, and so I took a, a step back. I brought in, uh, uh, brought in a local court man, uh, Keen Corbett, who's exceptionally outstanding. And he's taken the reins. The business has kind of flourished off the back of that. And I took a little bit of time trying to figure out what I wanted for myself. And... I'm a big believer that your career should be completely aligned with yourself and so that your career complements yourself and your yep. career pushes a greater self as against let's say for example say if your career is out of sync with who you are as a person the more you indulge or what you in enjoy career, or what you love or what your passion is yeah it pulls you away and and so you can find yourself working and working and working and ultimately speaking you work to live but your very work is deteriorating your quality of life so anyway took a load load of time and I figured out kind of that I'm very interested in personal development um, I'm really interested in professional uh, development or entrepreneurial pursuit um, and I'm, a, I'm actually really interested in personal finance and investing so those are kind of three areas and I found that through being asked to speak once or twice and not going in unprepared and just seeing how the conversation flowed and it, it, every time I, I talked Ooh, that's kept, a gamble though isn't it like well, that's a brave thing to do yeah 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 but it, do you know what it, it flowed into those three kind of channels yeah the response was really positive and actually my own reaction from that I, I, I walked away from do you think then that going, possibly wow. you, you knew more than you actually did and it was maybe a bit of confidence Absolutely. or like an imposter yeah. syndrome type I think, thing I, I think if we all get in touch with ourselves a little bit more yeah, you, you'll be shocked at actually what you do know, yeah. or you'll sh be shocked actually of what you might be interested in. But for me, it was kind of, okay, well, let's, let's see how this goes. And then, then I started sharing bits of it on social media, and the response was really, again, really positive uh, and encouraging. And then I thought, well, okay, um, I'm doing these talks, and people are responding when I'm, you know, people responding really positively. And um, it's all kind of centered around these three areas. Um, okay, well, let's double down on that and let's, host, let's, let's kind of take that online relationship that I'm building off and bring it offline. And so at the start of this year, I hosted an event called Fresh Resolutions. Fresh Resolutions in its very title suggests like new beginnings, new ideas uh, for the year ahead. And everybody, I think, comes into an, a following year with great aspirations for themselves, but might not necessarily, uh, might not necessarily have the skill set to build out that in a in a fashion whereby they'll actually realize And it's it. a good window to start a year where people have oh, new intentions and it's yeah. everything. I, yeah. Like that kind of timing. I, I, I love the idea of that if you host an event, it can have a real impact. And the fact of the matter is people at the start of the year really, really have high Talk expectations, high yeah. wants for themselves. The only thing is, as I said, like over and above having wants, there's actually a kind of, a kind of f fundamental strategies that you can apply to actually realize that that a lot of people don't know I, I'm, I, I don't think I know by the way either but I felt okay well if I host an event at the start of this year the start of the year and I bring together experts in health wellness mindfulness goal setting personal motivation all those areas and I have them share their knowledge their expertise with regards to those strategies uh, one I'll really enjoy it I'll benefit massively from it but also let's host that as an event because Hopefully that can do the same for so many others. And do you feel a pressure in hosting those events sometimes? Like, do they, do they get, not talking about you personally, but like, they're very big events. Do they get, like, do you, 
the size of it get on top of you sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. you ever they're, get they're, they're, like I, what the fuck have I actually done got myself into here I, I work very closely with a guy Lawrence Nashall and uh, Lawrence is a videographer and um, he's so funny because he sees me get all excited about these ideas I'm like Larry it's amazing it's going to be you know the start of the year that's when we can have the biggest impact and we're going to bring together all these outstanding influencers you know it's going to be such a positive event it'll have such a positive impact on people so I get so pumped up and then I host it and like week by week by week he sees me getting more stressed more anxious more wound up and absolutely uh, I do I get really um so at some points overwhelmed. and is, is that because there's like just so much going on that you have to deal with uh, or is it that the event is so big and the cost of it is there a financial yeah, fear it, or is a, it just it's a bit of everything it, like do you believe if you build it they will come like, like <laughs> Wayne's World to, yeah thing. you have to have that Wayne's World uh, yeah. perspective I am um, I the, the thing is so I, I built out Leading Social and Leading Social is is, is great um, this is a whole new startup. So essentially, the kind of the way I was talking about Gary Vee, I was like, okay, right, I'm going to take inspiration from that. I, can I build a startup um, that, as I said, is completely aligned with myself, um, that complements the lifestyle I want, that can do good, um, uh, and and you can monetize it or make a career well, out of it. That's yeah. the, the business side of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I. I, the way I went about uh, Fresh Resolutions is that I brought in a number of uh, partners to it. Um, I sold tickets and I funded it on the uh, revenue generated. I didn't have a load of money to pump in. Yeah. Uh, so there's a stress in that. Yeah. There's absolutely the stress in keeping all the, whether they're exhibitors involved or partners in terms of sponsors, uh, keeping all Coordinate the Coordinate logistics, everything, yeah. Uh, keeping all the uh, attendees, keeping all those parties happy um, and growing it uh, week on week on week. But that was fantastic. Like I walked away, I walked away from that event and pretty much every day following, uh, like I actually even still get some mails now from people saying, look, that event actually had a really Effect positive me. impact yeah. on me. Thank you. And I, I used to host events previously. I used to host every club night, pretty much all around Ireland. I uh, did a load of work locally in Cork, brought MK. Uh, um, and I... So that's kind of where you learned your trade. I, I learned yeah. my trade in that respect, but yeah. it's a wholly different thing hosting a rave versus hosting a conference like that. And it's weird, like, people would mail you after that and be like, oh, that night was savage, thanks, man. Whereas this, people were like, that actually has made fundamental changes in my life. life. Yeah. Thank you. And I know that seems a little bit exaggerated. Yeah. Perhaps might seem a bit exaggerated, but fact, people. Yeah. So you're getting a huge uh, reward out of that personally. Huge reward. Yeah. And, but but also it's it's great excitement to, as I said, like to to start building out a business that you can have that impact. You can do financially really well. You can meet really really interesting people. Um, that's so positive. Yeah. And so that's you're kind of ticking all uh, Maslow's hierarchy needs there. Your kind exactly, of self realization. Yeah. You're, you're hitting level five kind of straight away. Look, I, for me, I think uh, one of the biggest kind of cutting edges people can have for themselves is building out their career uh, in an aligned fashion with themselves. I think literally maybe a 0.1% have that. And everybody else, almost unconsciously, is in a situation whereby uh, their careers are defect are actually detracting them from their their lives, or pulling them away, or however you want to express it. And that but it, uh, yeah, I, but sorry, it, but also not everybody. Someone has the luxury to get a job or career that they really love. That someone they have to pay rent and they have mm -hmm. families yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and sometimes that takes over. The fact you might be a really good artist, you can't make money out of that. Or no, sorry, I I I completely appreciate that. To be honest, the way I like the way I'm doing things, it doesn't stack up immediately at the moment. I'm, I suppose, cutting back in a load of areas to concentrate in that, in on that. So please don't think I'm preachy and being like, no, 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 you're not at all. No, no, no. Uh, that's a general observation. Not, not yeah, no, no, no. Like yeah, I, yeah. I haven't achieved that. Yeah. But I'm really, really excited about the idea of it, and I, and so the pursuit of that um, is is what's exciting me. But absolutely, I think it's extraordinarily challenging. Um, it's the journey. Uh, yeah. Really, really challenging to, to achieve. So, what an exciting uh, So all the pressures and all the uh, stress from the, the summit last January, you're now going again? Yeah, So yeah. you have the, on, I think it's this Saturday, because this is going to go out on Wednesday, I think. So this Saturday, 19th of September. Uh, it's Saturday, Saturday 12th, September sorry. 15th. Yeah. 15th, excuse me, no, it's uh, is the start summit. Yeah. Uh, so it's, that's just a summit focused on the start of entrepreneurship. Yeah, so, so 
step one, um, personal development. And I, I have this kind of this thought or this mantra that whatever about being successful professionally, you have to first be successful personally. So Fresh Resolutions is all about per, uh, personal success. Now, a follow up from that um, is entrepreneurial pursuit or professional development. And so on Saturday, September 15th in Dublin Castle, I'm hosting the Start Summit. And essentially, it's the event I wish was there for me when I was starting off. Its aim is really to kind of, I suppose, encourage um, startup entrepreneurship, but encourage it in a very uh, clear and transparent fashion. Because what I find is a lot of people jump into business not really realizing what they're getting themselves into. And the excitement of getting themselves into it covers them from month one, two, three, and about month four, they go, oh my God, what the hell have I got myself into? And so the event, uh, the event, one kind of briefing to everyone. And I think you're, even from a legal perspective, what happens there is if you even kick it on further to year one and year two, a lot of the time they haven't actually got the legal, the organization in the background correct. And they've either in a partnership, it hasn't worked out, they've signed a contract and the person guaranteed didn't realize they're having a proper advice on a lease, whatever it might be. So like, my advice is always get the right advice at the start and putting things in place so you're kind of future-proofing yourself for something that might go wrong. You've, you, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. Like, so I think a lot of people when they start off in business, they'll grab the first bank account they can, they'll link in with a mate who's an accountant, a mate who's a solicitor, and it's only four, five, six, seven months into business that you realize perhaps this yeah. solicitor in this example yeah. isn't as good as they should be. Maybe I should, maybe I should look up what else is on offer. Perhaps my bank isn't servicing me as well as I should. Perhaps we should look elsewhere. And so this event comes in at that point. Um, and it's to introduce you to the organizations that you ideally would partner up with to accelerate your journey. So it's a complementing ecosystem. Um, it, there's an education piece in, in the form of workshops covering the very basic fundamentals. So, for example, say legally speaking, what you need to know when you're starting up are on a PR basis, how to get the right PR for, uh, for your startup. Um, it's, we're lucky to have the guys from DocuSign coming in and guiding people through building a technical stack for their startup. Um, so there's all those kind of fundamental education pieces. And then We've kind of got a lot of open discussions from really outstanding entrepreneurs. People who've um, done it and have the experience. Yeah, yeah. like L Local to Yourself, Pat Feelings coming in, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got Dan Kyle. That's on our podcast. Ah, yeah. good. <laughs> um, he's I'm, brilliant. He's brilliant. And yeah. like we've, we've brought them uh, that kind of caliber of entrepreneur coupled yeah. with, there's actually three Irish Forbes 30 under 30s sitting in as well. We've, kind of, we've got discussion pieces revolving around, wow. like before starting what you need to know, <laughs> Uh, the challenges but if I was that. starting up a company, if I even got one takeaway from that day, it would be worth it. Like it, it just, just, just sounds insane, the information that's available there. That, that's the idea. Look, at that kind of point, I really, really believe. Like it's, it's strange, societally, I, don't, I know there's some supports for entrepreneurs, but really there should be so much support for them. Um, and certainly at that initial stage, it's the smallest of, the smallest of supports. That can make huge, huge yeah, difference. There are some the agencies, year. you know, in Cork, there's a Rubicon Centre and that, and they take business to a certain level. But I certainly think the government should be doing more. I think there should be grants, have more available grants. I think there should be, um, this is just my view, because we deal with a lot of startups, there should be allowances for some kind of tax break on PRSI or on VAT for the first two years in business. Mm. Because uh, when you start up business, it's all about cash flow and get money in the door and turnover. But like that money goes out very quickly because you have to pay staff, pay stock, pay supplies, yeah. whatever it might be. Uh, but if, if the government were to give someone a two year window, it'd be huge. Deducted yeah, in some way, huge. something like that. I don't know, um, uh, but I think there should be some government. Or even at the very least, access. if things go south, that they can, uh, that entrepreneurs can at least <coughs> avail of social welfare. Correct. Uh, that that's very very tough. Um, so I think actually even that's a very detracting uh, um, factor when it comes to considering options, and I don't understand why it's there. It just makes no no sense. Um, I think that's to be honest, that's I think it's disgraceful that that's there. Um, I'd love to know. Do you have any reasoning? Or do you have no, no, no idea. No, it makes no sense. I, I most let's start a campaign now. Let's 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 do it. Absolutely. Yeah, we should. I, well, I, I definitely need some kind of uh, government support. I think they're not doing enough for startups because I think there's so much knowledge, so much expertise. Like the internet has opened up so many people who are now experts in their bedroom on their laptops who won't be a burden to the state for the next 25, 30, 40 years because they learn their own income. I, I think, to be honest, I think that what's nice is there is a real want. Um, like what was fantastic with this event was uh, Minister Humphrey's endorsement um, and we've had the support of local enterprise office and Enterprise Ireland who have come in and said, okay, 
this is a good event this there is a good and um, there is a there is a good impact that's coming from this let's get involved let's support um, so thankfully I, I've yeah. got it and I can't be too quick to that's say brilliant. there is, there isn't I think there is I just think it also at the same time it pre presents a lot of, lot of challenges but uh, but then <coughs> the flip side of that I suppose is the risk of business you either make it or you don't and there has to be a fallout because the penalty of not making business is financial or reputation or otherwise well, that I, it's it's hard to be in business and to run a business yeah yeah no that, that's uh, that's to be honest again a core theme that I was going for with this that I didn't want to sugarcoat anything because the fact of the matter is it is so challenging like nine out of the, uh, nine out of ten uh, businesses fail in the first year that stat um, I, I think that could be dramatically reduced if people were that little bit pre pre warned or pre armed um, and so that's, that's again a big part of what we're trying to go for with this, that we won't sugarcoat it, we'll say look this is what you're getting yourself into, but if you're getting yourself into it, let's give you the education piece, let's give you the support piece, let's get behind you and make a go. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, it's September the 15th, sorry Jamie, I got confused there. Saturday, September the 15th, I yeah. know it's going to be a really fantastic success. Uh, thank you so much for your time here pleasure. today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on uh, to hear your own personal journey, your business journey, and I'm sure there's just going to be huge things ahead for you. So thank you very much and the best of luck. Thank you.